Hello, I'm Gareth N. Avis, and this is the Championship Rounds for Pitch Boxing, where I bring you all the interviews from the combat sports world. Enjoy. How's it going, Gareth? I am very well. Good. It's quite amazing. It's like blurred in the background, and you're focused. Yeah, it is quite amazing. I didn't. I have nothing to do with that. So. Okay. <laughs> you're not doing the graphics. For how are you? How are you, Katie? Yeah, I'm doing really well. Thanks, Gar. Just in the middle of training camp at the moment. Just uh, completely locked in right now, I suppose. But everything's going well. What have you done with yourself since, what was it, October the 29th against Carvajal? Um, since and until, what was it, I suppose, end of February, early March? But you went into uh, camp? Yeah, um, I was just basically, um, I spent a bit of time at home with family. Um I, I'm always constantly in the gym anyway, so I, I obviously keep myself uh, fit and ticking over. Um, but I can't say that I did anything uh, too exciting bit in those months. I was just uh, uh, living the, the usual quiet life. Um, it's probably very, very boring for other people. Is that down in Bray still? Yes, down in Bray, exactly, yeah. So are you jogging the 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 Victorian seafront in the mornings and? Um, I I don't. Uh, I I was more like a, I go for a nice walk along the promenade. You don't run anymore. Yeah, no. I don't. I don't run that there, but uh, I love I love the line, the nice long walks uh, along the the beach and, um, yeah, it's a great place to, to be living. When you say you live a boring life, though, is it really? I mean, are you invited? To, obviously, you're a superstar in Ireland. Obviously, you're you're so loved. And it's been a really long time. Are you kind of invited to lots of things and you get a chance to make appearances and do that kind of thing in that in those say four months off at all or not? Uh yeah, there, there's definitely plenty of invites, I guess, coming in. Um uh, I guess I just prefer the quiet life myself. Um I don't like the the limelight too much. I don't like the, the razzmatazz around uh uh, around any lifestyle I, I suppose um, I just personally prefer the nice quiet life just around my family my niece and my nephews and um, yeah that's that's my perfect life right there pick one highlight then in those four months where you weren't in <laughs> camp one what's the highlight uh gosh you're putting me on the spot here <laughs> um yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know to be honest, Gareth. The, the highlight for me is just being around my family. I spent so much time away from them, um, in, in over here in Connecticut during training camp, and True. having a chance to actually, uh, spend a bit of time with them, uh, to be around my niece and my nephews. That to me is just a, a huge highlight. Well, let me put it another way then. Um, in not the same question, but um, <clears throat> in terms of, was it disappointing that Croke Park didn't come off? in this period right now that as you called for after the cover health fight mm -hmm. um i'd really like to i think you said face amanda serrano but certainly have a homecoming in front of i think i've written down the figure eighty two thousand three hundred people at croke park is it disappointing just a, a part of you disappointed it's not croke park in may uh, I mean, it obviously would have been amazing if it was Crow Park. That's that that is our most iconic arena. Eighty eighty thousand people would have been absolutely um. That's a spectacle right there. But I'm just delighted that that homecoming fight is happening, and I, I don't really let my mental space. I can't let those things occupy my my mental space. Really, I have a I have a huge fight to prepare for, and um and so I'm just completely focused on the, on the fight itself, and I have a chance to to fight at home for the first time in my professional career. Um, this is, is going to be an amazing night for me and uh, it's just business as usual I guess Is it deep in your soul that walk to the ring and that week around Dublin is it going to be deep in your soul Yeah absolutely yeah, I, I think uh, this is this is all I ever wanted really yeah, ever since I, I turned pro I wanted to fight at home for, for many many years and now I have the chance to actually do that um, it's the atmosphere I know is going to be absolutely electric because every now and then I do think about the ring walk and, and the atmosphere and what it's going to be like to actually uh, step out and actually see um, so many people there mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be uh, one of the biggest nights of my career if not the biggest night Have you ever been to an event? I've been to um, UFC events with Conor McGregor yes, uh, Bellator events with yeah. James Gallagher and Peter Queeley and these guys and Kiefer Crosby and you know, all the, the great Dublin MMA yeah, yeah. guys. And it is just unbelievable. Have you seen any events there or not? 
I have actually. I've been to quite a uh, quite a few events there. Uh, I went to I went to see Conor McGregor myself there uh, one evening. I went to a few concerts the concerts there before as well. Uh, so I I am very very familiar with with the Tree Arena. It's a great place, a great atmosphere, and uh, yeah. I think the the acoustics there may match you and Tasha Jonas at the Olympics way yeah, back yeah. because it's yeah. got that peculiar. The ring is going to be close. It's almost like the theatre at Madison Square Garden, isn't it? That's where, right, yeah. where, 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 where the ring is going to be backed up right against the and you get the noise bouncing yeah. from that yeah. huge kind of stand, if you like. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's gonna. The atmosphere is going to be amazing. And uh, any any event I ever ever was, any event I was there at was uh, and uh, even the Conor McGregor event, for example, the atmosphere even that night was was absolutely insane. So um yeah it's gonna be huge. Have you are you planning anything special like a walk in with Sinead O'Connor or, a, <laughs> or a, you know like he did he did he I think Sinead sang when when Connor walked in. Oh, All right. Might yeah. have been in Las Vegas that one, but are you yeah. planning anything um, kind of historic and cultural? Yeah, I haven't actually thought about it that much to be honest, Gary. You're you're giving me ideas now, though. <laughs> um, maybe I will reach out to someone, but um. I, I I don't know. I haven't I haven't planned any, anything as of yet. So, uh, I'm never really I I never really think too much about the ring walk. Uh, I I'm more uh, inclined to think about the actual fight itself. Now tell me about the fight. I mean, many of us are saying, obviously, we want to come and witness you at Croke Park, hopefully in September against Amanda Serrano or TBC, and I'll ask you about that in a minute. But it's a big risk we're all feeling. Not a big risk, but it's a big challenge going back up to light well, uh, slight welter, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Light welter, one hundred and forty pounds against Chantal, mm -hmm. who's a small tank of a fighter, isn't she? She's a a bullocking, aggressive fighter. Yeah. Um, talk to talk to me about going yay to that one, and 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 not even thinking about how it may scupper Croke Park or it may not. I don't know, but. I mean, you took the challenge seemingly without it even a thought. Yeah, I think I've this is a fight that I've actually wanted for a long time now. Um, um, once we heard that Serrano was out, uh, the next biggest challenge out there was Chantal Cameron, and she was the obvious choice. Um, I don't, I we could have uh, picked an easier route for for my home going fight, a mandatory challenger, for example, but um, but that's not what I'm about. I just want I want to be involved in the biggest fights possible, and this is a uh, one of the biggest fights in boxing right now. I believe, undisputed champion versus undisputed champion. This is absolutely huge. I have a chance to become a two weight undisputed champion, and um, these are the kind of challenges that I absolutely love. Do you think it's going to be a war, you and her? I can't see anything different, frankly. Yeah, it's definitely, she definitely has a style to make this another uh, epic fight, that's for sure. It could be another fight a year contender. Um, uh, so we, uh, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens, but I've got to be ready for whatever comes my way. <laughs> um, we both mentioned Conor McGregor in this interview so far. He said some wonderful things about you. I mean, Con Conor's like, you know, the brashest man in Ireland at times, isn't he, with the way he is and all those things and his rise. And, you know, I, I mean, I've been around him many times. And uh, um, how, how pleasing was it for you that he wanted the things he said, first of all, and that he wanted to try and be involved in getting you to Croke Park, if that is true with the background? And I think Eddie Hearns even said he has met Connor and Connor mm -hmm. is serious about helping. And Connor seems in a really good frame of mind at the moment, I think. And he's back to wanting to fight again, be in the gym. And it feels like the old Connor's back. Is it nice to have that kind of allegiance with a, with a, he's the other side of the spectrum to you in lots of ways, yeah. you know, yeah. in, as he is publicly. Yeah. But he's a big figure in the Irish combat world, isn't he? Yeah, he's obviously a, a huge figure. Uh, what he's done uh, for, for himself um, has been absolutely remarkable. Um, a great athlete. And um and a brilliant business businessman as well, um he's done absolutely amazing for himself. So yeah, it's always great to hear obviously nice things about yourself and to to hear those compliments and those uh those words from Connor is always very very nice. And uh for him to even want to get involved and to, and to help this fight get over the line at Crow Park was he didn't have to do that. That was very very nice of him. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't that it wasn't the B this time around. But uh, regardless, uh, the support from 
uh, from uh, you know, my fellow by my fellow uh, countrymen is always uh, amazing. Do you think we're going to get Croke Park in? So we do you think yeah. you're going to get Croke Park? And we are with you. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, do you think you will get it in September? Is it are the soundings good for that? Uh, I have no idea to to be quite honest, Garrett, but I I hope so. Um, that the hope is is to have a big fight in Croke Park. Like I said, eighty thousand people would be absolutely huge. Uh, and it, it is our most iconic arena back home so so much history involved in that arena it would be amazing to fight there so I, I am still very very hopeful about that but um yeah we'll, we'll see what happens I suppose you'll have seen Anthony Joshua at the weekend obviously you know he's a huge figure as well over here um and globally um do you sometimes understand because you're very scrutinised as well. Your performance, I mean, I do it myself. I really, so we expect so much from Katie Taylor every time she steps into the ring. And there's that element as well with Anthony Joshua. Do you understand how someone like him feels sometimes when he just won a convincing 12 round points decision and yet he feels like there's this cascade of people picking him apart or criticising or do you understand the position that he's in? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I, I don't, uh, for, for me personally, I don't really take too much notice of what people are saying, to be quite honest. Um, I think you do have to have a very thick skin in a sport. Mm. Um, so uh, I, I've, I've never really, um, I never really take, you know, let, let, let that stuff get to my heart. Um, but yeah, I can understand he's in a, um, a, a tough situation. There's a lot of pressure on him, but um it was just great for him to get another win under his belt over the weekend it, that, that he actually needed that win and so it's a good uh, step step forward for him uh, for future fights and uh, so i think you have to look at the, the positives as well and he he has got another great win under his belt and um that's great the only time i can recall when you I mean, I was looking down your record. It's just gold, 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 gold everywhere. Wins, wins. The only time, obviously, things didn't go your way was in the Olympics in Rio. Is there a process as a fighter of getting rid? Do you have to rid yourself of psychological scars when you don't win and, or things don't go your way? Is there a process that you use to forget them or is it just getting back on the horse and getting the victories and... and 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 that disappears if that is there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think uh, you know, life is definitely full of ups and downs, and yeah, um, uh, you know, things that are definitely very much character building. You just you do have to just get back to the gym and just start working again, and mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, it's obviously very very important in those moments to have good people around you as well. I'm very very grateful. That I have an amazing family around me, people who genuinely believe in me. Mm -hmm. Um. And genuinely love me and believe in me and I think that that sometimes can be the difference between you know getting back up and, and not getting back so, back up sometimes and um I, I was I'm just so grateful that, that I have people like that in my life who, who I can't who I can't call upon and uh, I also knew during that moment that was I wasn't uh, the end for me I, I knew that mm -hmm. I, I was much better than that so I had the confidence and the belief in, in myself that things were going to be okay there isn't a whim, uh, There isn't a woman boxer, anyone in women's boxing that that doesn't mention your name, whether that be rivals or whether that's someone who. I mean, even Chantelle Cameron says you've been an absolute hero for her, so she's got to park that to one side, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. um, but virtually every female boxer and males as well, but every female boxer mentions your name as someone who has inspired them. To be the leader of this generation, I mean, I often ask you this question, how does it feel at this moment to be in this extraordinarily mushrooming period for women's boxing where there's perhaps 20, 30 of you that can arguably go up one, two or three weight divisions and all face each other in the, the first true period of women's commercially successful entertainment boxing with money in it. What does it feel to be like seen as the leader of that by other uh, by your colleagues? Yeah, I mean it's it's I'm obviously um it's obviously been an amazing time to be to be involved in the sport. Uh, the growth of women's boxing over the last few years has been absolutely incredible and women's boxing is definitely at its absolute peak right now 
Um, so many great fighters, uh, so many great, great fighters coming through as well. But um, I don't really sit back and, and think of myself as a leader. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm a competitor and a fighter just like everybody else. And um, I guess that takes some of the pressure off as well. I'm just in there to compete like everybody else. And I'm in the gym uh, just working hard, trying to improve like like everybody else as well. Um, I'm very, very grateful to be in the position I am in and to have a chance to influence uh other fighters maybe but uh when i'm when i'm in the gym when i when i'm in the ring i don't think of myself about, about anybody else other than i'm a fighter just like just like uh, my opponent is i'm just asked being asked to wrap now so if you encapsulated that when you do walk away eventually from boxing how would you like to be remembered for this what we're talking about in this period um i'd like to be remembered for someone who um obviously was so passionate about our sport and uh uh someone who uh helps to, to bring women's boxing on maybe but also someone who never took the challenge as well uh, I, think, um, I think uh when you're seeing champion versus champion each time they're, they're the kind of fights that actually brings women's boxing on um that's they're, they're, they're the kind of fights that actually make headlines uh that get people talking about the sport and um I love the fact that I'm involved in, in so many big mega fights over the last few years. I, I nobody could ever say that I've ever ducked anybody. And um I think my resume is uh is definitely uh like no other uh, fighter in, in, in the game. So. Appreciate your time as always, Katie. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you in fight week. Thank you so much, Gareth. You too. Uh, take care. Bye.